Good morning, YouTube. It is about, let's see, uh, it's between an eight and nine hour. I can't really see. Um, I want to talk to you guys about um, three more dreams that stuck out to me that I really am um, thinking that's coming to the forefront um, in time. Dream. Uh, let me see. Two of them that I know in time dream and... One is about a river of dead babies, uh, which made the blood, the water turn red. Um, also, um, traveling and, you know, just the plane system. Um, there was a third one I wanted to share. Oh, and it was just a personal test testimony of a warning for me. So, Father God, in my name is Jesus Christ, I just ask that you would cover me today and forgive me of all of my sins. Lord God, there are many, and I just feel like, Father God, I'm disobedient, and I just ask you to make me better, and make every YouTuber who feels that way better, and everyone who just needs forgiveness, Lord God, which is all of us, forgive us of all of our sin, Lord God, in my name is Jesus Christ, and protect us from the enemy through the blood of the Lamb, the covenant of God, Lord God, cancel every assignment and all assignments of the enemy, Lord God, coming against us in our lives. To make it harder for us, Lord God, things that you did not set for us to go through as far as trials and tribulations. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, give me, give me the right words to speak and give me great memory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, cover me in the blood of Jesus Christ as I give this testimony. Amen. So I have two um, end time dreams and then I'm going to add in um, one personal. So let's do the personal one first. This was a big time in my life when I told you about the angel warning me about the six month period of my life where the spirit of death had a plan for me in my life and it was a series of dreams I tell you guys that I dream in three um and uh dreaming of the devil you know speaking how can I make her one of us and the chalkboard of the angel you know saying not right now the six month period is not right now and so this this is the third dream um the third dream is uh, I, you know, was, you know, messing around with somebody I had no business. And I remember years before this happened, God gave me a warning three years. You know, God speaks to me and forewarns me before things happen. Um, so I saw my dad in his dream. And every time I dream about something, like I dream about other people instead of my face. And so like, you know, when you dream like that, God can give a prophetic sign of like, well, you have a na naive spirit. You know what I mean? So like I dream and then God corrects me and he talks to me in such a fashion where he puts fear in me. And I'm going to explain to you um, what I mean by that. Um, so in this one dream, I was correcting my dad. And I heard myself say, I heard someone like come up to me. It was, it was like a crowd of people and I was in the middle and it was like a ring of crowd of people. And someone came over to me and said, uh, tell this person, God said, if he doesn't stop sinning and doing what he's doing, he's going to go die, die and go to hell. So I ran over, I pulled my dad out the crowd, the one who had the sense in his heart and all that stuff like that. And I said, God told me to tell you, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you're going to die and go to hell. And I was, I said it like, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, the Lord said, you're going to die and go to hell. You know, and I was young at this time. I was probably... Mm, Ugh, let's say between 18 and 21 okay okay god is something in my relationship with him he comes to me and visits me years later so after the three-year warning was up of three years of speaking to me god gives me test periods and then when it, the real thing comes he just tries to see how much i learn and whatever i don't learn as a consequence when the real time comes is either i can shun the whole situation all together and not fornicate or i can go through and get some bruises and be reminded and get some scars and that's exactly what happened in that situation so years after you know years later three years later um I, you know, P. Terry's wasn't open yet. I don't know if you guys have P. Terry's in a, um, your city, but in Austin, Texas, P. Terry's hasn't been around that long. Um, and around this time, P. Terry's was just being built. Maybe it had been open, like, I don't know, a few months, maybe six months. Um, so one of my favorite things I love to do, and, and, and a lot of people know that I love to eat ice. You know, I have a dentist, you know, they look at my teeth in my mouth before I got my corrections and my, um my, you know, wisdom teeth pull surgeries, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and they're always looking at my mouth going, Oh, you know, 
you need to stop being nice or whatever like this and that, you know, you know, this could take your ceilings out. And I'm just like, oh, whatever, you know, and I'm just like, you know, leave out the doctors. I was like, I'm still going to eat ice. I'm still going to eat ice. And so I do. I still eat ice, you know, till this day. Um, but the ice, the cup of ice, I would get small ones, you know, and I would love to get the big ones and at least two on a, on a day that I'm really hungry and I would eat ice before I ate anything or drunk anything. I would love to just eat on ice before I go to work and when I leave work. So I would lose a lot of weight because I really wouldn't be doing too much of eating, but the cost of the ice costs 38 cents. So the ice was 38 cents and I didn't think nothing of it at this time. At this particular time, no dreams are coming to me. No dreams, you know, and God does that for a reason. He just sat back going. I'm trying to give an example. Watch me and then, you know, that's him. That's what God does to me. So, um... It wasn't until maybe three years into, you know, seeing this person or something like that. Um, because I told you guys a dream where I heard, I heard a voice say, I'll see you in hell in three years. And this was about the third year mark. And um, I'm getting ice on a regular. I'm love, you know, loving to eat ice. I go through, I'm like, hey. I want to order my ice today. Like, oh, it's going to be 38 cents throughout the year. 38 cents, 38 cents, 38 cents. And it's never come into my mind about that dream about 38. Okay, God says to go back because I forgot something. You're right, God. He's like, they're not going to catch what you're saying if you don't tell them what you said in the dream. Okay, so when I corrected my dad, I heard a voice say, go and correct your dad and say, hey, if you don't stop sinning, you're going to die and go to hell. When I told him, if you don't stop sinning, God says, you're going to die and go to hell. My dad turned around and looked at me and said, why oh my gosh i'm only 38 he says i'm only 38 years old and i was like you know woke up from that dream like wait a minute wait a minute my dad is not 38 years old my at that time my dad was like 52 you know and he's like 64 today so i'm just like what and so I'm going to the I'm going to the aisle p terry's p terry's getting my ice it's 38 cent 38 cent 38 cent 38 cent and all of a sudden, it just dawns on me at the last minute around that time. And God was just like, when he was warning me, I was getting dreams of death. I was getting a lot of dreams. of. I had kept one dream to myself, and I had died. Uh, a diesel truck was behind me, and I was on the highway. And uh, I looked over my shoulder. He was coming real, real fast. And all I could see in my left rear view mirror is to look enough. And I was like, <gasps> and that was it. I was gone. Hit me. It was swift. I kept that dream to myself. I didn't tell anybody about it. I told you guys that I was uh, in the, the living room dressed like getting ready to go in the back room and dressed like in some laundry or whatever I was doing. Remember that? And then I come to the front and have sex with this guy. Well, how this played out in the natural in real life is I love to wear lingerie because me and this person would have a lot of kinky sex. Um, and I would go in the back room, get dressed, and then come in there or I would come over under with some lingerie. And... One, my ex-husband uh, goes, hey, I need to speak with you. And um, he goes, are you doing anything or having sex with anybody or anything like that? This was a year before all this happened, before I even met this person. I'm like, no, why? He goes, I see you in lingerie, and I see you uh, like in a trench coat, and all you got under there is lingerie on. And this person was seeing a lot of people and having sex with a lot of people, and you were really want something. Some you were really wanting something else from this guy, but he didn't want anything from you, and it broke your heart. And he broke your heart, and it was really nothing from the situation but just sex. I'm looking at him like, okay, whatever. How many people, like I said, don't know how to receive correction and warnings? You know, we are all over the place, and you know, this is a generation that's more focused in music and technology and stuff like that. So around this time of all that death and everything like that, and fast forward a year later when it started rolling out, my ex-husband came to me again and told me he had another dream. And this is a dream I held secret that, uh, you know, me uh, dying on the road in a car wreck with a diesel truck hitting me. Um, he called me out the blue one day and I was well into fornicating for a year with this person. And he goes, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, what's up? He goes, I had a dream that a diesel truck came up behind and hit you real, real hard. Uh, real swift and you didn't have enough time to move or nothing like that. While listening to that dream with him, my heart just sunk. 
because I knew that it was of God and I was trying to shun it. I really, you know, liked this person or whatever like that. And I just began at that point to really take it serious. And like I'm telling you guys, when when God is wooing you off a path to get off, you better get off because he'll give you all kind of warnings. And to be honest with you, he don't have to give you 15, 30 warnings, 60, 100 warnings. And God gave me about just that much. Um, all he has to give you, and sometimes people only get one good two to one, you know, one to two warnings. And we better be grateful out here, you know, that, that, you know, that God is merciful like that. So push come to shove, you know, I got off that path. Once I began to realize, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm eating ice. You know, this is 38 cents. I, I remember this dream. And then I just got all scared all together and I got off that path. Okay, let's go on to another um, thing. That's how God speaks to me and then I get fear in my life. Okay, so... I woke up, I was in my 20s, young 20s, 21, like I was 20, 21. I just woke up and all of a sudden I saw the plane uh, system of traveling. I saw people traveling from everywhere, from this city to that city. And it looked like I was standing in the middle of an airport. And you could just see people, like it was like a base place where people meet up to tr fly and go to the next place. What is that, an airport? Okay, so I'm just watching looking at these people these you know regular day i'm watching these people go get their tickets and fly and these people go here and there and god was just having me in the middle watching the normalcy of how things normally go and then all of a sudden it's kind of like musical chairs when you play the music everybody's like going around the chairs going around the chairs going around the chairs all of a sudden when the music stops you got to stop waiting sit down and somebody don't have a chair right Okay, so this dream manifestation manifested into an and manifested into an interpretation by way of this. Everything was going good as normal, then all of a sudden, one certain year in the future, uh, all that traveling stopped. Meaning you got stuck in your city wherever you was, and then it was a, like a whole bunch of panic. Uh, going on and 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 people were like wondering you know a whole bunch of panic and anxiety like why is this going on why is this happening and like i i remember people in this city was trying to get to you know somebody in california was trying to get to somebody in boston somebody in boston was trying to get somebody in texas somebody in texas was trying to get somebody get to somebody in mexico and it just happened that way okay it just stopped people were stuck in their cities and they could no longer travel they were stuck. Wherever you went, you landed last. That's where, how things happen. Now, this dream when I was 20 and 21, um, I, at the beginning of this year, I remember losing a, a certain job and I was working for a lot of day labor and I would work, work like at a, at like the Irwin Center and that's like what pe famous people sing and you know, a lot of basketball games and stuff. So I was staying and scan people's tickets and I started getting a, a live vision revelation. It says in Acts, I believe 217 and in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You know, um, he, he's talking about people seeing visions and dreams and, uh, and, and, and all that good stuff. But I've been dreaming for a long time. That's my calling. One of my callings. Um, so I started getting revelation and God was just like the beginning of the, you know, of the events of the end times are rolling out before your eyes, daughter. And I'm looking all of a sudden when I start getting live visions, what'll happen is I'll start tuning and zooming in to where I am. I'll look at you know, whatever it is God is telling me to look at, it's always like this magnetic pull to look at a ticket or a booth or whatever somebody is saying or a t-shirt or saying on a t-shirt or something, a color on the wall, a poster, you know, something. It may be Jesus is coming soon. Jesus loves you. Obey, be obedient, whatever the case may be. Uh, for this, God was just like, this doesn't this remind you of an airport? And I'm just like, yeah. And, um, you know, he, he was letting me know and giving me an auction of a warning that something's going to happen and change soon with the airport, you know, type thing, like with the flying system. Okay, so long story short, lo and behold, I heard um, earlier this year that, you know, they're going to switch to IDs and stuff like that. And people uh, who travel will be only affected. Who travel around has to have their ID meshed with, like, giving out more personal information about their um at address and stuff like that along with the traveling ticket it, that has to be meshed together they have to have a new id everybody else doesn't, doesn't have to necessarily have it but they w w would require people to have it and i'm just like oh my god you know and so 
I believe this is one of the dreams that has, you know, come to pass um, or will be soon, uh, uh, let, let me say, you know, that I've had. Um, so end time dream of the babies and everything, you know, this was most definitely, you can sense that the rapture had happened, right? And I always talk so loud. And so I saw babies. Babies were... <sighs> I still want to find this website for you guys. There's this website of dreams and I understand this dream, but you guys don't because I'm sharing it and I, I like for you guys to research. In this dream, I just walked up to a riverbank of dead babies and it was so many babies. I, I walked up and I didn't even understand what was going on. I just walked up and it's like, God, you know, I'm not saying that God couldn't or he wouldn't give me an explanation of the dream, but I didn't ask because I'm just like, why am I waking up to a river of dead babies and it's so much bloodshed that it turned the waters red? And it says in Revelation about, you know, the sea and everything and stuff, you just dying like so much loss of life that it turned red, the water. And it reminds me so much of that scripture. And I just kind of like looked. They were all chopped up. They It, it, it wasn't just like they were just dead and you saw like them being shot. They were in, in pieces. I want to give something. I, I God, please bring this this website back to me. There's this guy, and 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 I know we all give dreams on YouTube, but there's this guy who gives people permission. He reads their dreams and he puts it online for other people to read. All these people on this website, when you read it and go online, they all have awesome dreams that gives a perfect understanding of the end time lots of dreams i've had confirmations of different things and you guys have got to read it lord god bless me to know this website so i can give it to the youtubers so uh a, a youtuber not a youtuber i'm sorry uh, uh people of this website this person was given a perfect example of you know everything that i'm telling you about the babies, the end time. So I got an interpretation after looking at this website. Uh, this this one person dreamed the Russians coming over and this and that. And so when time had left on and, and you know, the rapture or whatever the case may be, um, you know, after all of that, you know, people who were left behind and became pregnant and stuff like that, they were just like, you know, either... You know, you, you, you give the mark or I'm going to cut your, your wife's uh, baby out of her stomach. And he's just like, no, 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 no. And then some people refused to, 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 um, give the mark regardless of what threat. And I just read somebody else's, uh, thing. That's something that popped up in my newsfeed on YouTube. And I, I just couldn't believe it. There's certain end time dreams that people have that they're going to really force you to try to take the mark, but they're going to be like, you know, you know, take the mark or else. And I thought, you know, like I said, it started off as, hey, we're holding the mark down here. And then it started getting more pressurizing and more pressurizing. You know, and the first steps was people who are walking around free with it. Because there are people right now who are walking around in Europe, different places of the world with this mark, with through their jobs and all this. And so it's not mandated right now. You know what I mean? And, you know, once America starts getting bombed, the different things start taking place, that's when that stuff is going to happen like that. So that person had the dream uh, online on this powerful website that I need to get to you guys. You know, they were cutting babies out of people's women's wombs. There's this one dream that I want to leave with you guys. And... I want to share this with you. And God gave me a sign of it, of it being true of how it would be. The dream started off with me and my ex-husband, my second ex-husband. And we were discussing uh, who should work days and who should work nights so we can watch our children and be able to um, do co-parenting uh, with the, the, the joint custody order. Um, he was just like, okay, 
I want you to work, um, you know, I, you know, I want you to work, uh, what did he say? Like mornings and then I'll work evenings. And he said exactly that in a dream. And I was just like, okay, whatever. Um, and then, uh, I went into the dream and I started dreaming of a sea and I started dreaming of looking off into the distance and seeing a ship coming in. Um, and I was just like, I looked and I said, oh my God. And I was like, <clears throat> do you see that? And my ex-husband was like, see what? I said that out there. And it was a ship coming in. It was a, an, invasion sh an invasion ship coming from another country like Russia and coming onto the land of America. And I was like, oh my God. And I was freaking out like, oh my God, it's happening. It's happening. And I'm not ready. And I was young, you know, in the dream. God, it was showing me. And uh, my ex was just like, who is that? I was just like, you don't want to know what that is. And then all of a sudden, the winds and everything started going and turning. And then the ship started turning around and going back the other way. And and my ex-husband said, what in the world is going on? Who's doing that? And I looked to him and I said, that's my friend. I said, he's turning it around. And then I woke up. <laughs> you know, I wanted to wait to share this dream. I really wanted to wait to share this dream. I don't even know if y'all caught that. I know persecution will come, but I, I must be obedient. Yeah. The interpretation of the dream is this. God held back the end time. Yes, it was supposed to. There were some things that were supposed to start going and rolling into effect. Yes. God turned and slowed things down. After that dream, because I was just like, whatever. When I have powerful dreams, I'm like, whatever, God. Um, I had just got a divorce from my ex-husband. And I was getting into my apartment, found a job at Gold's Gym, and just, you know, having some good, a good old time. He came to me and was like, Cornetra, I need to talk to you. He was like, hey, look, you need to find a job at so-and-so time. And I found a job at, at this time. And when he said that, something went boom and, and my heart just sunk. It sunk. I don't know about anybody else, but when I get something so powerful, like if I'm dreaming about something and it manifests into the natural, like who does that? It's not the enemy. You know what I mean? I'm dreaming about 1003 in a dream and all of a sudden, all the way till this day, I see 1003 everywhere that I go. And let me tell you something that happened on my way home. Uh, and I sat in the parking lot and I went to the store, the grocery store. And uh, I went to the grocery store last night. I told you about the number nine when uh, the angels was flying and uh, the rapture came. And I, I told you I saw the rapture and I saw God do this and lift his hand up. And I was given the number nine by an angel. And they said the number nine is the worst number you can suffer with. It's the number of death. And I went into the line last night. I was looking for some ice in the store. And I said, hey, I need your help. You know, what line should I go in? Is all of them open or do I got to do the self-scan? He goes, no, you can go to number uh, uh, aisle, uh, nine or you can go to eight. And then when he said nine, my heart sunk. I was like, dear Lord God. I said, I was just like, don't be religious, don't be religious. I was running to get to line eight. Line eight was so full, I was just like, I'm not going to be able to get out of here in time. I ran to uh, aisle nine, and it was ready for me to go through and put my stuff on the counter. And I just kind of looked at God like, This has been happening since my son was a year old. My son is 15. I've been seeing the number nine. Now it's added to 1003. And dreaming this right here that God turned the end times around, it makes sense to me because I, I was dreaming of being left behind and I was at a young age like I am right now. Now things have shifted in the spirit and I am now seeing the end time when I'm an old, when I'm an old lady, like I'm 75, 85 years old. 
of the rapture. And I'm like, God, I don't know how many people will sit there and believe that because there's so many people speaking the word of God. You got people coming and saying, hey, repent. God is coming at any moment. And guess what? God always gives that urgency, just like he did with John the Baptist. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Why? Because a lot of us, many of us, is not going to survive to see that day. It is a right now moment for a lot of us to get ourselves right and ready because we are living in the moment to be saved every day. Somebody could die in a car wreck. Someone can die of cancer. Don't know how to cry and ask for God for healing. Or God may let that person go in cancer. You know what I mean? And, you know, it, it, it's Russian roulette. And it's in, all in God's hands. It's beautifully, perfectly in God's hands of how he wants things done. Somebody gave this revelation. I watched Penny on the Gandhi, and he gave uh, this story that he put on because he listens to people's stories and he debuts them. This guy's son got murdered, and God calls this man to forgive the, 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 the forgive his son's murderer. And the son's murderer ended up giving his life to God and ended up doing ministry work and being saved and doing a great work for the dad. Ain't that something? And then... God came and explained to the man, your son, if I were to let him live another one or three years, was going to start backsliding and going into um, different things of the world and a lot of fornication. And he wouldn't have made it. You know, he would have been, he would have died in a car wreck. And what I did was I caused him, you know, to be, to, you know, to have a certain life circumstance happen to him. And, and I wanted to catch him in a state where he was saved and I could take him into heaven before he went off bad. After I heard something like that, I'm like, you know what? God is almighty. He is all seeing. He is all knowing and he is omnipresent. There is nothing else I need to say about God in the discussion. You know what I mean? I can't. How can the, the clay say to the part of how to be made? There is no way for us to say that. There is no way for us to tell God anything about our life. And that, that's, that's going to be heavy persecution for me to, to say what I said about the end time. I have dreamed for the longest that the end time was going to come at a certain time. And, and you know what, though? Looking at Donald Trump and the way things happened and the way things were, I don't even know if you guys remember. Not just Don't just focus on Donald Trump. People were getting together. I don't know if you guys remember that meeting. You got to Google this, and, and this is proof. The nations and everything was gathering to whether or not if they should do a peace treaty. I promise you, I promise you, this is a, this is real. The nations and everybody was gathering because they really felt like war was going to start and they were um, gathering to see if they needed to sign a peace treaty at that moment. I promise you if you start researching and uh, I, God was telling me that I needed to get on my knees and pray and pray and pray and pray. Remember, whoever has been following my YouTube page, I told you guys that I was travelling, travelling, and said, God, not right now, not right now. That was four or five years ago. I said, not right now. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And then after that, God was just like, I have heard you and a whole lot of other of my uh, uh, daughters and sons and I'm going to hold back the end time for you guys now I do not